The following video will go through normal CT renal anatomy. The objectives are as follows. At the end of this presentation, the learner will be able to firstly, locate the kidneys on a CT scan of the abdomen. Secondly, you'll be able to identify the renal artery and vein. And thirdly, you'll be able to describe the internal architecture of the kidney. Specific terms include the cortex, the medulla, pyramids and papilla, as well as the minor and major calyx and the renal pelvis. So this is a CT scan of the abdomen. We're at the level of the kidneys with the patient lying on their back in the supine position. This is the right side, left side, and this over here is anterior abdomen. And this shows that the kidneys are being shaped and they're located in the retroperitoneum. A specific space in the retroperitoneum is the perirenal space. And this is bounded anteriorly by the gerotus fascia and posteriorly by Zuckercandle's fascia. Medially, this is the psoas muscle, while posteromedially, you see the quadratus lumborum muscle. The perirenal space contains a variable amount of fat, as well as vessels and lymphatics, and of course the kidneys, and more superiorly, the adrenal glands. The following are coronal images of the abdomen. Over here is the head, down here is the feet, this is right and this is left. Well, this is a 3D rendered image from this imaging data set. And this shows that the kidneys are typically about 9 to 13 centimeters in length and about 5 centimeters in width. They span the T12 through L3 vertebral bodies, with the left kidney being slightly more cephalate compared to the right due to the presence of the liver on the right side. Now the internal architecture of the kidneys is made up of two main components. The outer component is known as the cortex, while the inner component is known as the medulla. The cortex has parenchymal bands that extend out to the medial aspect of the kidneys, thereby dividing the medulla into these triangular shaped pyramids. Now when we image the kidneys, we can image them without contrast or with contrast. This is what the kidneys look like in the coronal plane without intravenous contrast. With contrast, we can see that the outer portion of the kidney enhances earlier and is much brighter than the inner portion, which is the medulla. This scan was done at about 30 seconds after giving intravenous contrast. At about 90 seconds, we see more homogeneous opacification of the renal and medulla that look very similar on uh, this scan over here. And if we image at about eight minutes, we can start to see the contrast now excreting through the ureters and the collecting system, which now appear bright. If we were to focus again on the medulla, we'll notice that at the tip of each medulla is kind of a triangular shaped portion, and that's known as the papilla. That's where the distal collecting system will come and excrete into that portion. Now the papilla empties into a minor calyx, which is a cup-shaped uh, projection uh, as part of the collecting system. We can see one minor calyx very nicely in this image, and several others we can see, although a few are out of the plane. Now in general, every papilla empties into one minor calyx, with multiple minor calyxes, typically two to four draining into a major calyx. We can see one major calyx over here, and another one over here, which is uh, slightly out of the field of view. The major calyces, of which there are typically two to three, finally drain into the renal pelvis, which then drains into the ureter. Now the renal hilum is the medial most aspect of either kidney, and it contains the renal artery that supplies the kidney, the renal vein that drains the kidney, as well as the pelvis and the collecting system. In general, each kidney has one renal artery, though as we'll see, there will be sometimes variations in this. The renal artery typically arises posterior to the takeoff of the superior mesenteric artery at about the L1, L2 vertebral body level. The renal arteries typically arise posteriorly with respect to the renal veins. Now each main renal artery branches into segmental arteries. The segmental arteries course through the kidney, further branching into the interloper arteries, which run along the margin of the pyramids as can be seen in this uh, example here. Now the interlobar arteries will give rise to arcuate and interlobular arteries, which sometimes may be too small to uh, see on CT imaging. This example shows that the right kidney supplied by a main renal artery, as well as an accessory artery that arises a little bit more distally off the distal aorta. 
The left kidney, on the other hand, is supplied by a single left renal artery. The renal veins drain into the infra vena cava. The right renal vein is shorter as it drains into the IVC. The left renal vein, as can be seen in this example, is longer and goes over the anterior aspect of the abdominal aorta. However, there can be variations in renal vein anatomy, typically on the left side, where we often can see a retroaortic renal vein, which goes posterior to the abdominal aorta, or a circumaortic renal vein, in which there are branches that go both anterior and posterior to the abdominal aorta.